things that Jen and I have been working on, and we actually have a we're, we're one of the drop point stations for the ballot initiative to get reproductive rights on the ballot. And the numbers are, you know, decent so far. But there was something that I, I don't remember if it was Florida politics or something I came across the other day. And they were basically talking about how uh, one of the big accomplishments that uh, Nikki Freed has done uh, as of late is she got the blue gala in Miami sold out like ahead of time. And I'm thinking that's not something to brag about. What is to brag about is where are we on the numbers right now getting reproductive rights on the ballot? That's significant for a multitude of reasons. Now, right now, they say they have about a quarter million of a potential million ballots that need to be signed. Granted, it's the summer. Things will most certainly pick up you know, a month or two from now. But obviously, it's going to take a hell of an effort. If they are able to get reproductive rights on the ballot in 24, that is at least going to give it's not going to win you the state like it's not going to be Rick Scott. But could it potentially pick off a number of state house races that absolutely should have flipped last time and will flip this time with better candidates running on an issue that is going to get people's asses to the polls? Yeah, I think that would matter. But it's like we get our priorities straight. I, well, I think there's, there's two things there. I think first, I, unfortunately, we're going to see a lot of people, uh, God willing, if she's listening, uh, that that item gets on the ballot. Um, it's I don't think it's going to be enough, as you said, to, to really win the day for for Democrats. Uh, but I think because I think you're going to see a lot of people who go in and vote for that state constitutional amendment uh, to guarantee abortion rights in the state and then vote for Republicans who would deny them those very or have, I should say, have. The proof's in the pudding. Uh, a six-week abortion ban is not a six-week abortion ban. It is an abortion ban, okay? A full mm -hmm. stop, okay? In a state in which, what was it, March, the University of North Florida released a poll that found 77% 70, of respondents opposed the state's six-week abortion ban that they passed anyway and Ron DeSantis signed into law. That should be a non-starter, by the way, for his presidential campaign. It should be Ron DeSantis banned abortion in Florida. Full stop. End of story. That 77 percent of respondents, by the way, 77 percent of Floridians don't agree on a goddamn thing. OK, but 62 percent of those were uh, or I should say 62 percent of Republicans uh, were included in that who, who did not support a six week uh, abortion ban. Um, so uh, I think the Republicans, when it comes to the abortion issue, the Republicans are the dog that caught the car. Now what? They've exploited this wedge issue for so long to win elections with demagoguery and 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 uh, Christo fascism and all sorts of uh, uh, absolute fear mongering and lunacy. And now they don't know what to do without it. So that's always helpful for Democrats. The problem is, as Peter just pointed out, that when they're just fo when Democrats are just focusing on registering Republicans and independents, um, and they're not working on cultivating talent on transforming this dead brand, on flushing the toilet of the toxic uh, elements, the really the cancers that have been on this party that have killed this party in the state for decades, the consultant class, the political grifters. If you're not going to be proactive about cultivating uh, new consultants and new campaign managers and new treasures and young, new, fresh talent, in addition to a, a, a deeper bench of of candidates, which that's the problem too, is that these are not candidates that particular Democrats don't tend to put candidates on the ballot that inspire voters voter turnout to go out and vote for these people. So yes, you're going to see a lot of people turn out. I think uh, to support this effort if we can get it uh, on the ballot. Um, but I think, as you said, it's going to be a, a mixed result for for Dems uh, on that same ballot. But uh, you know, I had. I had Deborah Dorbert on on the Because Miami podcast some time ago, um, and it was just an incredible. I mean, it was traumatic listening to her story. I cannot fathom what it was like to live it, um, but I think that people understand. Seventy seven percent of Floridians and sixty two percent of Republicans from, in Florida understand that the conversation of, around abortion has been so skewed for so long. Uh, it, it in no small part because it's mostly by rich white men in power who are having that conversation, that it's all in the context of promiscuity and, and, uh, uh, you know, and, um, and birth control. It is not, it is healthcare. It is women's healthcare. And I think people now more than ever understand that when you hear the story of people like Deborah Dorbert, uh, suffering and being 
tortured, state-mandated torture. This woman was forced to grow a ghost inside of her body to her physical and psychological uh, 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 trauma. Uh, and it's just one of the, it's, it's a story that exemplifies why. And this is a woman who, who she and her husband paid no attention to what at the time was a 15 week abortion ban because they had no plans on getting an abortion. They wanted to grow their family. They had every intention of reproducing and giving their four year old son uh, a, a little brother or sister. Um, and so they're like, well, what, what, how does that affect us? It's like, you don't know it until you, until you're in a terrible position and of having to not only make a horrible decision, but your doctors cannot help you. Your doctors are saying, no, sorry, we can't do anything for you. We cannot give you the best health care, uh, despite the fact that this is our medical advice that you need preterm induction. We can't do it because the because the law is so vague. We may go to jail just for doing our jobs and giving you the best health care. And what that means for the state of Florida is not just women you should not get pregnant here in the state of Florida or travel here if you are pregnant because you cannot receive first world. Uh, healthcare, but we are going to see all of us an overall decline in the quality of medical care offered here because real doctors, good doctors, are not going to want to practice in the state of Florida where they're not legally able to provide the most effective care to their patients, where they have to watch women suffer and bleed and die before they can intervene. We're going to get nothing but, but you know, quacks and kooks like Doctor Doctor air quotes uh, Latipo. Uh, and th that's that's what we're going to be left with here in the state of Florida. And more than just women uh, will, will suffer, uh, setting aside the fact that 168 million Americans lost their not only lost constitutional rights that they've enjoyed for decades, but the most fundamental uh, inalienable rights, which which is those of, of bodily autonomy. Yeah, I find it infuriating. I actually find the fact that we're still discussing this infuriating. I find I have started now where I see this as violence towards women. And I have said it many times. I'm done debating this with people. I really am. I'm not going to sit there and negotiate. Is it six weeks or 15 weeks? Or is my baby viable? Or do I have rape or incest as a justification? I find it so infuriating. And I am at the point where this is something that I'm willing to die for. So if I'm willing to die for it, you better believe I'm willing to kill for it. And I am so sick and tired of arguing about this with people. I got to tell you, it's violence towards women. That's what it is. It's violence towards women. And there's also the huge elephant in the room, which is statistical data says that four out of five women believe in a woman's right to choose. And it's about a 50-50 split with men as to whether or not women have the right to choose. The fact that this is so dominated by men who think that women don't have the right to control their body. I tell every, you know, every dude that I ever meet that has an opinion about politics and especially about this issue, I just say, just if you only knew what it was like to have a period just once in your life, you would shut the fuck up forever. You would never say another word to women ever again. And the fact that it's so dominant in men saying women shouldn't be allowed to control their body. How, how, why do you think it's that way? How do you see it that way? This to me is a fundamental conservative value. This is small government is, is, is really how this should be couched. This is, this is the government. It, it, it should not be in a, in a doctor's office with you and your medical professional. should not be in a room with you and your, your spouse or your family making Healthcare uh, decisions like this. The, these are these are the so these are the death panels that the Republicans accused would be would re, would be the result of Obamacare, which never happened. And remember, the one thing we've learned from the from the Trump era is when it comes to Republicans, uh, uh, every accusation is a confession. So every time they oh the Democrats are doing the Democrats are, that's exactly what the Republicans are doing or or attempting to do, and and that's exactly what this is. But let's let, let's be real. Not only is this uh, uh, a small government issue and a matter of, of, of individual liberties, the most fundamental uh, liberties, um, but uh, abortion is also protected uh, uh, by your constitutional rights for religious freedom. Uh, there are Jews who believe who believe as a part of their religion yeah. uh, that that there is nothing more sacred than the life of the of the woman. 
Uh, and uh, uh, well, she may not be a mother. She may never be a mother. I, I'm remiss right. to call. I'm remiss to. It is a woman. It is a patient. Um, they they may be pregnant, but but they're not a mother yet. Uh, and 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 part of the consideration there is is they they will never be a mother in some cases because in the case of Deborah Dorbert, their 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 unborn child has has Potter syndrome. They don't have kidneys. They don't have f- developing lungs, and worse, there's no amniotic fluid as a result. And this and this baby uh, is is that will never barely grow to term is pressing against Deborah's rib cage, giving her a constant state of pain, uh, possibly deforming the child uh, as it develops. Um, and then the psychological torture of having to talk to your four-year-old child about this, about having to go out. You know what happens when a pregnant woman goes out in the world? Oh, congratulations. What a blessing. What do you do? So she either has to internalize that or explain over and over again what it is that she and her family are suffering, suffering through. And then finally, at 37 weeks, the doctors told her, They told her months earlier that this child will live for minutes or hours. And uh, baby Milo was his name. And he lived for 99 minutes as Deborah and her family sang to him, read him books, listened to him gasp desperately for his first breath without kidneys or formed lungs and heard him 99 minutes later uh, take his last breath. That is torture. Um, Tortured, yeah. and not yeah. only tortured Deborah, but tortured baby Milo. Yeah. Um, and, and so this this idea that there's some sort of pro life, this is not what this is. This is the control of women, the control of women's bodies, um, and uh, it is grossly unconstitutional. Billy, I'll take it a step further, and you two are native Floridians, and of course, this to me is just Terry Schiavo all over again. This is just another example of what has always been the dark force within the GOP, and it has been for the better part of one or two generations, and that, of course, is the evangelical right, and the amount of say that they have in the party, um, the fact that Mike Pence was a heartbeat away from being the president of the United States should tell you all you need to know. And the fact remains that they do not believe in the separation of church and state. And they try to come up with these contrived ways of saying, well, that's not really what the Constitution says. No, it is what the Constitution says. It means that you cannot infringe on somebody else's beliefs. If somebody believes in bodily autonomy, full stop, you do not have the constitutional right to take that away from them. But unfortunately, in their mind, they... They really believe that they are like doing God's work. Well, guess what? Your God isn't my God, so I don't really give a shit. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.